Medieval 2 taught to war. The Teutonic Campaign. Lithuania. At a random point after turn 25, you will receive this message here. Now, historically Lithuania did change their state religion to Catholicism, but should you do the same in-game? Well, let's take a look at the advantages and disadvantages on either side. Let's begin this video by looking into the military of both variants of Lithuania. The military of Pagan Lithuania from normal settlement buildings is a very poor choice. Cities can only train missile cav and the basic archer and spear militia units. Castles are also very limited, but can at least produce a range of units that are fairly decent for early and mid game. However, Lithuania makes up for that. Their system brings back from multiple temple choice options idea from Rome told to war. Lithuania has a choice of three temples. Option 1, Temple of Divus, which helps with public order and population growth. Tier 1 offers access to the Zuckian Horseman, a basic, rather expensive missile cav unit, which is not really that great compared to standard missile cavalry that Lithuania has already access to. Tier 3, they get the Divus Guard, which are a cheaper to maintain general's bodyguard, but slightly weaker. But do not let this first temple's failure fool you. A better temple, in my opinion, is the Temple of Percunus. Health bonuses plus weapon experience. Tier 1, you get the Latvian Crossbowmen, which have 11 attack and are fairly cheap. If you like mercenary crossbowmen, this is the temple to go for. Tier 3, it provides for followers of Percunus, which is a unit with very high attack, very cheap, and has a very good charge for a foot unit. But has no armour, so it has very poor defence, but overall, quite a good unit to have. The third and final temple, and in my opinion the best, is the Temple of Guiltine. This provides public order and morale benefits from Tier 3, on tier 3 I should say, because you can only take it up to tier 3. Tier 1, you get the Samodician Axemen, an elite unit, certainly for the time you can recruit them. 16 attack and 14 defence, and are fairly cheap to maintain. Compare these to standard units you get in castles, they will tear the enemy to pieces. Tier 3, it gets even better. Guild Teens Chosen, attack of 19, defense of 24, and are even cheaper with their upkeep than the weaker Tier 1 counterpart. Each temple at Tier 2 also gives you the Bajorja Heavy Cav Unit, which is a fairly good cavalry unit, so either direction you go in, you will have decent heavy cavalry available to you in all settlements, city or castle. That final temple there provides some brilliant cheap units that appear very early in the game, allowing you to actually be able to counter the Teutonic Order. If you convert, you lose these temples, and of course access to train these brilliant units. Your roster becomes more professional and modern, modern for the time I guess. Suddenly you gain access to an increased tech tree, where you can recruit gunpowder units and better towers. As you upgrade your castle further, you will also gain access to better units, the game calls them. But overall, I don't think they're that much better, really. I'll get more into them later. However, the event fires at a random turn after turn 25. Hardly late game, meaning that as soon as you switch, your military position gets weaker and only strengthens later into the game, by which point, as a human player, you've probably already conquered enough territory where you don't need a late game advantage. There's two units of interest in the Catholic roster. First is the dismounted chivalric knights, that are similar in strength to pagan knights, just more expensive, so really there's no advantage there. And then there's Sidovian tribesmen, which are cheap, but just don't hold up compared to other units when it comes to the stats, especially considering you gain access to them mid to late game. I made two basic graphs here to show the strength of a pagan let's play and Christian let's play over time, just showing the military. As you can see, it depends on how long you want to play for. 
and it also depends on your skill level. So overall, in my opinion, the Pagans have better military. I think that was clear. But the Catholic route has the better economy. The ability to upgrade a settlement further, city to citadel, castle to fortress, is very handy. This unlocks a variety of new buildings that help with trade and population growth, leading to a tax increase. Overall, it is obvious that you will make more money as a Catholic faction, allowing you to field more troops and expand faster. Mm, but there is a but, and it's a very, very big, big but. Point one, by the time you have the ability to convert, you still have rather small settlements which cannot even be upgraded to the new level that you have just unlocked. This won't change as the campaign goes on, but I just want to say that you will not see any immediate benefit to your income upon converting. Point two, by this point you have been playing for quite a while, and so probably hold quite a few provinces. Although small and poorly developed, the quantity of them will generate a lot of income for you anyway. At the end of the day, it is medieval too taught to war. It's not like money is difficult to come by, so pagan or catholic, you don't have money. So yes, you could make more money as a catholic, but by that point, would you even need to? I would say, probably not. But it is the same conclusion again. If you are a decent player, you won't need to convert to catholic, as you will be doing just fine on your own with your conquests, your units and your finances. But if you are a newer or less experienced player, you may want to make a quick switch, as you may not be as large by the point that opportunity arises. Meaning that upgrading for that extra bit of money and the late game gunpowder units could come in handy. Last but not least, the general gameplay of the campaign. The moment you convert to uh, Catholicism, you are suddenly a Catholic faction in a pagan land. You will suddenly be bombarded by a fair amount of unrest, this could potentially be difficult to manage, but from my experience it's not that bad. But there's the benefit of going Catholic when it comes to conversion. As a pagan, when you take Christian land, all you have is priests to convert to over. Your temples don't convert the population. However, as a Catholic, you have priests and you have churches that do help with the conversion. And the majority of your neighbours are already Catholic, so that means settlements should be easy to manage upon conquest. However, in reverse, as a pagan, you would have had to spend money on building up your temples, which will get destroyed instantly upon converting and you'll have to rebuild churches. Making all that money spent in the early game on temples that you needed to be a waste in a way. Overall, converting is good for the economic side in the long run, but that is all. And in addition to that, it will take a while longer for it to trigger, and then even longer until you can reap the rewards. And by that point, you have probably already won. When it comes to military, yes, Catholicism has good late game units. But do you really need gun units and cannons? They help but they are certainly not necessary, especially in the Teutonic campaign. Ultimately, it is, of course, up to you, and many of you will have your own opinions, but if I was going for the most strategic let's play, I would pick Staying Pagan. Here are some of your opinions shown in the Discord poll I carried out, if anybody is interested in the community's side on this debate. Overall, there's many arguments you can make, and it depends on your skill level, speed and play style. It also depends on when the event hits. Your decision could be completely different if it hits at turn 25 as opposed to turn 100. Although, whatever you decide to do, make sure to go in with a plan. From turn 1, whatever you do, it is best to begin making preparations. Don't build many pagan buildings and priests early on if you want to go Christian. Don't focus too much on population growth if you want to stay pagan, just some examples. This is my opinion, and I think it could be a fun mini-series this. And I look forward someday to doing an episode for the Western Roman Empire in Barbarian Invasion for example, or perhaps some factions or newer titles, and see if they should convert or not. 
If you want to see those type of videos, please do subscribe to get notified of more. If you have enjoyed, please do like and share with someone you think may be interested. I've been Melkor, and goodbye.